Native River, the Big Breakaway. Down here we have El Dorado Allen, Fiddler on the Roof, and down here, Lost in Translation. Have you got it yet? We've come down to Milbourne Port in Dorset to catch up with Team Tizard, who are flying. How much nicer is it for you guys with the way this season's panning out compared to last year? You know yourself, Mick, it's about, it's about winners this game. Yeah. Um, as simple as that. Last year was, it was really hard work. Um, and, and it wasn't like we could put our finger on it immediately and cure the problem. Um, you know, every year is, you have a bit of a quiet spell, horse have a bit of dirty nose or have a little cough or something. You, you, you know the answer immediately. We, we weren't getting that last year. and, and um, it's difficult with everything that was going on in the world, yeah. And then obviously off the back of losing Kim as well, it just it, it, it wasn't an easy winter. I don't mind admitting. I mean, I had plenty of sleepless nights over it. Um, you know, Dad, Dad was still here, yeah. But he was also had he was having to deal with the loss of Kim as well. That going on in the back of his mind as well. So how much like how hard was that for you guys as the family as well? Yeah, it was just real difficult. What you wanted was this brilliant season to make it all. To fight. lift everybody. Of course you did, yeah. But and um, and it went in the opposite right way. So, um, it's made it a challenge. Simple as that. Um, you know the, and then you look at this year. We knew the horses were back fit and healthy through the summer, and kind of knew this knew this was coming. You know, we were confident that that everything was was back right. The horses yeah. were well. It's just what the job's all about, you know. Even even the horses that are getting beaten are running well. You know, we've got a great team of owners that, if the yard are winning, the, the owners are happy, the staff are happy, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, and then 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 it snowballs like horses you you sh that shouldn't be winning kind of run well and win, and for no for no apparent change. Amanda, how nice is it for you guys that the horses are running consistently well this year? It's just, it's a relief, I think, more than anything. It's just, it's great for the whole team. It's a big team effort, and to, to have these big days is, you, you just can't beat it, you know? It's, it's great for everyone, and it's just nice to turn a corner and see the horses look so well and so fresh. But looking at all these horses this morning, you know, all of them were working hard, but they look so well in themselves. They like do, yes. They just look like they're thriving. Their, their coats are great. They're doing the work very easily um, and that they still maintain a, a nice bit of freshness when they come out on a Monday morning and, you know, you can't ask for more. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to see. Joe, this lad kind of needs no introduction, really. Anytime you see a chestnut with a big white face around these parts, it's Native River and them. Yeah, I mean, he's, he doesn't need any introduction here, that's for certain, you know. He's been um, been a fantastic horse for us. Um, and, and still is, you know. Yeah. Like, Mickey rides him a lot, a, a lot for the last three or four years, and, you know, every day he's still as enthusiastic. And still competitive, you yeah. know. He's, he's still he's still doing it on the track, which for horse rising thirteen, who's been in the in the top races for the last well all his life really for the last six or seven years, is um, he's a credit to himself. Mickey, you are the lucky one who rides near the river every day. Yes, very lucky. <laughs> he actually, he's quite a softy. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah. As a character. What is he like? Because he's got he's, a great attitude when he's racing. Oh, he is lovely. Probably the nicest ride I've like ever ridden here. But when you have an arse like him that's achieved what he's achieved, yeah. for you to be able to ride him every day is quite a nice... Oh, it's, I remember the first day I rode him, I thought, oh my God, why are they letting me loose on this horse? <laughs> um, and I took him up the gallop and I was like, oh my God, you just sort of get that little like tingly feeling and you're like, no, this was... Yeah, it's great. He's quite a special horse to have around the place. Though, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's the heart of the yard. And he's not finished yet, is he? No, no, there's still a lot of life in him. Worked him yesterday and like, he powered up that gallop with determination. So, yeah, he's still got 
still got a few more runs in him yet, bless him. Are you, are you tempted by the Welsh national? Because it ticks a lot of boxes as far as he's concerned. Yeah, well, I think we're going to... I spoke to Garth about it yesterday. We're going we're gonna to confirm him. We'd love to run him in his conditions, like, every month, and then once it dries out, that's, that's it, you know. And we're, like, this is pretty much his, his last season, so... Um, Every time he runs in a conditions race, he carries 11 stone 10, so he's going to have the same weight in a Welsh national. Um, it's, it's, it's very tempting. It's, it's a big possibility. I mean, nothing's written in stone yet, but we are, we're going to take it, to the, take it all the way. Brendan, how has it come about that you've ended up actually riding everything? Because... You know, you were sort of riding the odd one at the start of the summer, but now you're number one man. Yeah, well, la last season I sort of had a couple of spare mornings when I was at Wincanton racing that day. I thought I'd pop in and say hello, see some old faces. Rode out a few mornings and um, sort of picked up a couple of spares along the way again. And, um, yeah, last season I sort of thought, right, I'll just make an effort coming in once a fortnight on a schooling morning if I can. And... Um, try and come in on a regular basis and um, I suppose just had a bit of luck on my side, got in a couple of winners and kind of sort of went from there really. You know, you're somebody that I've watched for quite a long time. You're quite, you've got plenty of confidence in your own ability to get the job done. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to think I always, ha I always have, but there was a stage there where I just didn't really have the horses to sort of help me along. But um, it's nice that I can sort of try and prove that once I do have a horse capable, I can get the job done, yeah. Lost in translation has taken the lead. They come to the final fence. Brendan Powell, a big leap on Lost in translation. Landed by two lengths to master Tommy Tucker and up the run. It's now a three-length advantage. Lost in translation, getting a little weary late on, but top-class performance back to the winner's enclosure for Lost in translation. He was a lovely one to get back. You know, he's a real head-scratcher last year. Um... And like you question yourself, like when you, when you get a job to get round, you question yourself why you're even running the horse. But what we were seeing at home was good enough to be running. He had a hob day during the during the summer, and he was fit for Ascot. Yeah. You know, he, he's. I'm sure he's improved mentally because because he went through that sort of pain barrier and he finished his race really strongly. But he just looks a happy horse this year. You know, last year. Um, you've seen him schooling and he's keen and he's swinging up for it. Yeah, yeah. And perhaps he wasn't doing that last year. And then King George got a bit of unfinished business there, like he's pulled up twice in the race. Yeah, you know, after he won a bet fair, we really fancied him going into it. And then um, and he bled that day and he, and he stopped. But I don't think the track will be a problem for him. And I think, I think that sort of proved it again, that two and a half around Ascot finished it well, but was able to travel yeah. through it. So um, it's, it's the right thing to do. So with the ground being right, it's the right thing to do with him. And the horse is in good form. Fiddler on the roof. How disappointed were you that he, you know, to get so close in a race like the Ladbrook and then get not quite there? It's nobody's fault. The horse, the horse ran a blinder, as simple as that. But if I'm happy being beaten half a length in a, in a Ladbrook's trophy, then something's wrong, isn't it? Yeah. Where do you go from here? Well, we've had lots of talks about it. Um, we had the King George as an option, um, but it probably would have come too soon anyway. So now we're just sort of looking back, thinking could run very well in a Grand National. Um, the boys have got a Gold Cup horse. So, um, so we might wait until run him, run him after the weights come out. Chestnut horse just going past us there. What's that? Big breakaway. What about him? So we're disappointed with him at Sandown. Um, because uh, until falling at the last in but everything was spot on. We're trying yeah. to give Brave Man's Games £12. Had we stood up, we'd have been a, a decent second. You know, the forms worked out really good. He just didn't operate it... Um, it sound down at all and looked awkward. So he's, he's actually had a hob day, he's had his wind done. We sent him up to Ben Brains. You know, he's had a month on the walker, he's just back cantering now. We'll run him, we'll try and get a run into him before somewhere at Cheltenham. But we're probably going to send him to, to William Fox Pitts for a week um, mid Jan and let him have a proper schooling session over there and make sure we've ticked all the boxes with him. Um, and then he's got loads of time, he's got loads of time to come back right. The engine's there. We want a couple of names that we can pin our hat to uh, and look forward to in the novice hurdle division. So come on, Joel. Well, the one I put my neck on the line with was JPR1 at the start of the season. He, he, looks, he looks a very good horse. Had a good race at Cheltenham. Ran really well at Cheltenham. Yeah. Um, 
you know, around Super Race. Another one is we take care of our own. Um, we actually saw it at school and with Brendan yeah. on this morning. Probably might save him for bumpers this year. He's only a four-year-old. Might run him in a in a bumper or two this year, but you know, he should be a standout novice hurdler next year. When do we see the name Joel Tizard on the license? All the courses and that are, are done. Um, it is a it's a six week process to put your application through. So I was I was qualified the end of October, but then do you want to change the name in the middle of December and go back to Nort? Yeah. It makes no odds at all to us here. Oh, so you know, oh, Dad's right. he says he's in semi retirement. It is not not at all. Yeah. You know, all the owners know that. You know, this is this is going to be Colin becomes Joe. Um, I've had a couple of like a few nice days out with winners and he was like, well, I might leave it in my name a bit longer and you can just deal with all the hassle. But um, it's a family business, you know, it was set up as a family business. It's just a name and, like, you know, I keep telling people, like, it makes no difference. The chances are it will change as the season turns this year, but it's not, it doesn't affect how our business operates or how anything happens, you know, and there's, there's nothing done without discussions and Dad's enjoying being able to pick and choose a little bit. You know, he doesn't want to be on the phone 24-7. Um, he doesn't want to go racing six days a week. He wants to be able to just pick and choose a little bit, and, and so he should. He's, he's, he's at the age where he can.